Bless and protect and keep us all. Good evening. The last prayer when we were all kneeling is called the prayer of Saint Ephrem the Syrian. And it was written probably in around the 8th century. And the tradition with that prayer is when it's offered that people do what's called a great prostration, meaning they start fully standing and they go down to their knees and down to their foreheads to the ground and they do that three times. Now, that is not possible to do when you have the setup of the pews that we have here. And when you do that, people think that it belongs to something outside of the Orthodox faith, which actually, it was started in the Orthodox faith, and it was adapted by other faiths. So the prayer of Saint Ephraim and the great prostration involved with that is actually something that's very Orthodox. And so the lesson tonight, especially to my friends in the altar, and to all of us, is what is it that we bow down to? What is it that we bow down to? We came and we bowed down our faces to the ground. If you went tomorrow at school and you did that in your classroom or in front of your locker or on the football field or the sports field, people would think that you're weird. And yet we did that here in the church. Why did we do that? We didn't bow down to a piece of wood on the wall. We didn't bow down to a beautiful table. We didn't bow down to put our head on soft carpeting. We bowed down to our Lord. In fact, the only thing that we should be bowing down to is our Lord. We can give respect to other people and extend courtesy to them. But the only thing that we should bow down our whole selves to is the Lord. And so each of us divides our time in a certain way. We spend time with family. We spend time with work. We spend time with hobbies. But how much time are we spending with the Lord? How much of our life is spent bowing down to the Lord? How often do we think of the Lord in the middle of the day when we're at school? when we're playing sports, when we're driving our car, how often are we thinking about the Lord? The, uh, the hymns of our church are so beautiful because th this, is a, this is a textbook. You know, the majority of the hymns of our church, they actually do not praise God. They don't ask God for anything. The majority of the hymns of our church, they're teaching us something. In fact, on Saturday night when we sing the hymn of the resurrection, we're not praising God and we're not asking God for anything. It's an FYI. In case you're wondering what we were doing this whole week, Christ rose from the dead by death, trampling down death, and to those of the tombs he granted life. When someone in your family passes away and you say, and people say, well, what happens to them now? The answer is that hymn. Christ rose from the dead by death, trampling down death, and to those of the tombs he's granting life. So the, the majority of the hymns that we're hearing this week, they're teaching hymns. This Holy Week book is like a big textbook. And so the hymns that we, we heard tonight, the hymns that we heard tonight teach us that everybody has a talent. Somebody is good at teaching. Somebody else offers a liturgy. Somebody else gives to the poor. Somebody else teaches the one who doesn't know anything about the faith. But everybody got some ability to do something for the glory of God. That's one thing we learn. Something else that we learn in the hymns tonight is that we don't have anything really to give. We have only to give back because God gave something to each of us and when we're using that thing, we're really giving it back to Him. So when you say, I did a splendid service, we did a splendid service tonight, God made that happen. 
we just gave back to him. And going back to the bowing down stuff, the gospel tonight is probably the harshest gospel of Holy Week. Jesus gives a, a lashing to the people in the, in the temple. And he says, you're bowing down to the wrong things. You're bowing down to rules and regulations, and you forgot mercy and love and faith. You forgot those things. You're swearing by the walls, and you're swearing by the gold, and you're swearing by the jewels, and you're forgetting who created those things. So this textbook, in order to feel victory on Saturday night, in order to feel joy, there is no joy without some sorrow. There's no success without effort. So in these early services of Holy Week, the church is, is teaching us, reteaching us, that we bow down to the Lord, that the talents come from the Lord, that we serve our others and we give back to the Lord in doing that. You can take the entire Holy Week book, the entire church, all the icons, all the hymns, all the vestments, all the everything, and you can boil it down to something that's very simple. Love God and love your neighbor. The whole thing rests on that. And everything we should be doing, everything we're doing, should be an extension of that. We come to this beautiful church and we have these beautiful hymns, and we have beautiful young ladies who did such a beautiful job, wonderful job tonight in singing. That was awesome. Guys, that was, that was wonderful, the singing and praying. That's an extension of teaching us how to love God. We worship as a way to learn how to love God. And through the hymns, we learn how to love one another. Through the scriptures, we learn to love one another. But it all starts and ends with that. God's love for us, our love for him, and our love for everybody else. That's what we bow down to. We bow down to God. We bow down to him in love. And then we go out and we use the things that God gave us in order to love other people, each of us in a different way. Tomorrow we're going to read the parable of the talents. If you're not going to come to church tomorrow, I encourage you to take five minutes and read Matthew 25, the whole chapter, three wonderful parables. But when you read that parable of the talents in Matthew 25, you realize that everybody got a talent. Nobody got no talent. Everybody got some talent. And everybody got a different talent. In that way, we're all different. Everybody got something different. But the fact that everybody got something makes everybody the same. Everybody got an ability to go and manifest God's love to other people. Some do it as teachers, some do it as lawyers, some do it as doctors, some do it as priests, some do it as athletes. We all have the ability to do something to glorify God. In that way, we're equal. But we're different because we each have a different way to do that. Thank you, young ladies, for doing so wonderful tonight as the maidens, and thank you to the army of guys in the altar. Thank you to our army of chanters, and thank you to all of you for worshiping tonight. Tomorrow we'll have two services, the pre-sanctified liturgy at 9 o'clock in the morning and the third bridegroom service tomorrow evening and at 6.30, and the choir, of course, will be here tomorrow to sing the hymn of Cassiani, and so I, I hope and pray that we'll see many of you tomorrow. Have a blessed evening, and please come and venerate the icon on your way out.